Hello everyone, welcome to the round 5 lockout countdown, apologies for the slight delay, I only got back home not that long ago and was on the phone and whatnot and uh, I was like, no, I've got to stream, got to stream, of course get, got to get the hair looking good too, that's mandatory. Um, how are we all doing? Lots of questions I'm sure, uh, lots of viewers already in the chat as well, give the stream a like just to start off with because we know it's going to be great subject to microwaves and it's raining outside which is a big topic of the week, lots of rain around Sydney, Newcastle, tell you where it's not raining, Melbourne, for once, Melbourne is bright and sunny, Melbourne, anyone anyone listening from Melbourne, let me know, says it's kind right, right now, it's 16 degrees, partly cloudy, that's perfect for con conditions for a um, Mr. Ryan Pappenhausen, I think, who well, I am very strongly considering trading into my team, um, Welcome, uh, thank you to A Khan for becoming a member. Really, really appreciate that. 124 viewers, fantastic. I think Moz has summed it up here. What was it? I just I missed the. Sorry, I missed your chat. Your trades are here for a good time, not a long time. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I will be doing. So, I think I th I think I have finally landed on the trades and what I will be doing this week. I think I'll be boosting, uh, and I don't think I'll be selling Tel and Mae. I don't think I'll be getting Ponga either. So if you've been keeping up on my Twitter, just going non-stop. Um, Latrell Turbo, obviously both issues. I think though, like out of the two, Turbo is definitely who I'd prefer longer term. I know this week sucks versus Penrith, but after that's Warriors, which is not great, but it's fine. Uh, then it's Titans. And like I'm thinking round seven, I will want Tommy Turbo versus the Titans. And there is a chance I don't get Cleary back in round seven, even though he's going to be back. I've got Luke Brooks, so I'm not selling this week either. Brooks is also going to be playing the Titans in round seven. I may just keep both of them for that Titans game. Um, so that's the main thing with Turbo, is that like round seven, the trolls on a buy, he will 100% be a sell. If I sell Turbo this week, that's one trade. I'm already going to have to sell Latrell again. That's two. That's an extra trade. I've already been boosting like crazy, making heaps of trades, and I'm kind of getting a little bit scared about how many trades I'm using. So... I do want to try to balance it a little bit. You know, Warriors away is tough, but we have seen some good fullback scores against them. I know you can say the exact same thing about Latrell, but Latrell just like, honestly, I'm sick of him, to be honest, and I um, don't want him in my team anymore, frankly. So I think I'll be selling Latrell this week, and I don't think it'll be Ponga. Uh, originally, I was keen on Ponga, but thinking about it a little bit more, um, if I wanted, like, for me, number one target that I personally wanted this week was Val Holmes, just given that I don't see a strong captaincy option in my team. So I wanted Val. And that's, I just think I've got a good feeling. I think he's going to go good this week. I know the next three matchups, Parramatta Sharks, Penrith, don't scream, absolute must uh, owns. But this week is the week, I think, against home against the Titans. Parramatta and the Sharks can concede points. Penrith game is obviously tough, but it is at home. After that, he goes back into Dolphins, Titans. I think I'm just going to want him eventually. And he's already 830k. He's got a relatively low break even. I'm kind of just like, get Val in. And my best way to get there um, is m probably one of like, in like Mulatalo or Latrell. I think Mulatalo for me has done a job. Um, a little bit concerning. He only based 14 last game. I didn't even clock that until earlier today. So the base stats were massively low. I think he has definitely benefited from some junk points in the last two weeks. The week before last, he got like 25 points in the last play of the game. It's very similar happened last week too. So I think I've been lucky to get the points I've got from Mulatalo. He's done a job, but I don't think his scoring is sustainable as sustainable as Val. So Mulatalo on a buy is a good excuse for me to sell. Um, apologies, guys. I know there's lots of questions coming in, but I'll hopefully maybe answer a lot of yours with my own thinking. So Mulatalo for me, I think is a sell. Um, outside of my center wings, I didn't really want to sell anyone else, particularly for... Uh, Talangi, who I think is a must trade in this week with a very negative break even. Taylor Matt, I think will come good. Um, you know, playing for the Panthers, I think I just want to keep him. And so the route then meant just sell Jacob Gagai. I don't know when he's going to come back into this team for the Rabbitohs. So I think I can at least get rid of some Deadwood by selling him for Talangi this week. Um, I can sell Mulatalo for Val. So if I quickly show you those couple of moves, if I just bring in Val for Mulatalo and then for Talangi. Uh, I needed 53k to fund that. Interestingly enough, the Melbourne Storm final team list, Jack Howarth, he's on the bench. Is he going to be an option? Who knows? I'm not going to trade him in this week, obviously, just because it's completely unknown. But my God, I wouldn't kill for him to just become an option. 
it's just an easy smoothies or burbo downgrade. I would 100% smell. Uh, I always say this. I would 100% uh, be selling smoothies or burbo ahead of um, Jacob Gagai in the sense of that it creates more money. But they're both locked into my second reward, and I can't do duels to get to Tulangi that way. Dylan Brown, I'm happy to just keep for the time being. Uh, I think he will hopefully come good. And if look, if Dill Bags doesn't come good, he could be my ticket to Cleary in round seven or eight via Luke Brooks as well. So keeping Brown for the time being. But yeah, to make the 53k, I think I want to play a little bit of the fullback thing. I want to sell more uh, Mitchell. And yeah, I've made the decision to hold Turbo. I think if you're in a KP Turbo combination, fine to sell Turbo this week. For me, Ponga, obviously, it would be nice to trade in, but I would have to sacrifice Tail and May to get him. Also, the weather in Newcastle means, look, I know it's not all just about this week, but thinking about it, I'm not like I wouldn't feel super confident this week in him, at least with Melbourne. I've got a good feeling on Pappy. So Mitchell is going out, and I think I will be going Pappy. I only have 2K in the bank, but I think these are going to be my trades this week. I think it's going to be a boost again but hopefully I don't boost for a long time that's three boosts in a row but to me that means my center wing I'm really happy with uh, I'd have Val, Dom Young, RTS, Taylor and May as my four primary on the bench I'd be having Bostock and Talangi and also Ethan Strange I think that's really really solid some cash generation in there too second or fourth is obviously not fantastic but I think I don't need to rely on anyone outside of Curran Lane and Pierce Paul for the time being maybe Smithies as a reserve um Front row forward is going to be an issue next week. Obviously, I'll have Liam Henry on a buy, but next week could maybe just be one trade. If Josh Curran gets dual status, Spencer Lenu swapping in Curran to front row forward, and with my 2K in the bank, maybe I just go with a really cheap second row forward. Maybe I just completely downgrade, and then I maybe just play Smithies again next week, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, and yeah, but that's currently, I think, what I'm going to be doing. I think I'm just going to make all these trades now and just stop fluffing about it. But that is what I'm thinking with my moves. Pappy in VC for sure. Get in here, Val. What are you doing on the bench? you got to be played and you're going to be my captain this week for sure. Um, I won't reserve Ethan Strange. I will reserve Bostock. Just making sure I've got the orderings correct in my team. Uh, yep, he would have to be a reserve. So... I'd be reserving Turbo, Bostock, uh, Smithies, and Lussick, which isn't fantastic, but per Burbo against Penrith, not interested at all. Um, I'm going to play Liam Henry over Sam Hughes just because I know Sam Hughes is starting, but just don't know what the minutes are going to look like. Um, and then, yeah, look, Joey Lussick, hopefully... Oh, so actually, that's right. I'll make a call on the Sunday because Canberra and Paramount versus each other. I'll make a call on the Sunday if I play Talungi or Lussick. To be honest, I'd actually play. It'd be between it'd be two out of three of Lusik, Smithies, or Talangi, which I don't have to decide right now. So that's what I'll be doing. But I'll be keeping Tail in May, I think, for this week. Um, not a lot of money in the bank, but look, we'll deal with it when the time comes. Anyway, that's enough on my team. But I will take your questions now. Um, there's a lot of you watching, and yeah, we got 45 minutes to lock out. Uh, thank you, Ian, for being a member for four months. Very much appreciated. All right, uh, lots of questions coming in. Keep them coming in. Um, I'll be nothing out Spencer Lenu for Cleary. I could, but look, that could be remedied by Josh Curran getting dual status next week. And if I had a gut feeling, it would be that he's going to get it just because of the noises that um, Supercoach NRL have been making about him getting the dual. How many boosts do I have left? Troll Mitt. Funnily enough, I'm selling you this week, Troll Mitt. Uh, I've got two boosts left, which I'm really hoping I just save one until Origin now, um, and then maybe the other one post-Origin. He's a good trade option for Lusick. There's not a lot of good hooker options at the moment. I mean, Danny Levi, maybe he's got a negative break even, but he's not that much different in price now to Lusick. I think if you're going to sell Lusick for anyone, I'd probably just try to get the money to go up to a Harry Grant um, or like a um, Reese Robson who's got a good matchup this week versus the Titans or maybe a Coruscant. That It'd be one of those three, I think. Or maybe, maybe even JMK. But yeah, it would just be up, I think, to a gun. I wouldn't worry about trying to downgrade. Would I be trading in Pappy if I have Turbo and Drink Order? So Turbo, Drink Order, again, this is... So my rationale to keep Turbo is I think I'm going to want him again um, pretty much from next week onwards because Round 7 versus the Titans, going to definitely want him there. He could be a strong captaincy option that week. Longer term after that, looking at Parramatta at home, Canberra at home, Dolphins at Suncorp, which is a great matchup. 
Uh, then it gets tougher with Broncos, Melbourne, Penrith. But I think from after this really crap week versus Penrith, round six to ten, I'm going to want Turbo. Um, the thing with Pappy is that, look, on paper, the matchups don't look so strong. You've got Broncos at home, but I know people are shouting out that he's got a three-round average against of the Broncos of 132, but he was goal-kicking in that time, so I wouldn't read so much into it, but he has got a good record against them historically. Um, he's just also passing the eye test as well. Bulldogs at home is obviously fantastic. Roosters away is not great. That's going to be tough. But then you've got uh, Rabbitohs, which looks good at home, and then you've also got Titans, which looks great. So I think if you've got Turbo and drink water, you're probably in a luxury spot where you could look to move on Turbo. Maybe, like, you know, these are the kind of things I'm thinking. Turbo down to a Pappy, if that funds like a Val home, so I'm really, really keen on this week. Getting both of drink water and Val this week would be great. And that maybe leaves you with flexibility then to say when Cowboys versus Penrith, which I think it happens in round nine, round eight. So in round eight, uh, you could sell drink water maybe straight back to Ponga, maybe to Reese Walsh. Um, or maybe to Turbo. So you've got some flexibility. So again, I think you just need to think about how many trades have you used, what other trades you're going to have in the future. If you feel like you can manage, then I think I'd be happy to sell Turbo this week. And anyone who's thinking about, I've seen a few comments about um, giving Turbo a week and then selling next week if he doesn't look good. Uh, that's absolutely not how I would be playing it. I would be looking at it as if you're thinking about selling Turbo, you'd do it this week because you just want to avoid this Penrith matchup. He doesn't have a great record against them. Um, to be fair, who has got a good record against Penrith? But you look at his last three, 26, 62, and 68. Like, I'll be happy if Turbo gets 65 this week. Um, uh, Aman, why not Ponga? It's purely, again, weather-related, um, which may be silly, but I'm just thinking this week, if if I'm banking on the wet weather playing a factor, you know what? I'm actually going to shout out Random Stats Guy. If you don't follow him on social media, you should. He posted a very interesting uh, stat about the Dragons versus the Knights. I'm going to quickly find it. Um, where was it? See if there's a way to scroll. Forward. Whoa. The Sorry. Can't play the audio. I'm going to keep it rolling until I get to the, the Knights one, but it was something crazy about the the Dragons having a great record against the Knights at McDonald Jones Stadium. Um, shout, shout out to Random Stats Guy. When I eventually, um, when he eventually gets to it in the reel that I'm watching, um, should I go? So I'll take a couple of questions in that time. Thoughts on Tuapiki to Talangi and Brooks to SJ. Definitely on board with Tuapiki to Talangi. That's a great move. Brooks to SJ, I did dabble with myself. Um, look, I don't hate it. Oh, yeah, here we go. Here's a stat. Uh, Dragons have won 14 of their last 17 games against the Knights at McDonald Jones Stadium. Interesting. Um, Akon, we love a wet weather match. Are you a Dragons fan or a Knights fan? Please let me know. <laughs> Um, yeah, look, I am a little bit thinking about Ponga, you know, I have been high on him saying he is the number one option. So part of me is thinking, am I just overthinking? Basically, I'm keeping Taylor May, um, to not, if I sold Taylor May, I can get Ponga in, but I'm just thinking again, value Pappy at 690k with a negative break. Even if I had to, I could always maybe sell him back to Ponga once he's made a bit of money. And then, you know, I'm just thinking if Ponga goes like 50 points, even 60 points this week, that's kind of only a little bit above his break even. But then he's got the Roosters. Uh, can they just keep him to 60? I don't know. I'm, pr- I'm thinking about a lot of ifs. But just thinking, can I get by the next two weeks when Pappy has got a good home game against the Broncos and then the Bulldogs next two, I think he could beat him. And then maybe we just reassess. That's kind of just how I'm thinking. Maybe madness, but that's where I'm at. Uh, you're a Doggies fan. You love a wet one. Yeah, look, I wouldn't be super high on the Roosters this week because I'll be honest, Kiri, um, coming back last week, did feel like he put a bit of a handbrake on our attack in general. So I don't... I mean, if you're a Teddy Domyoung, and obviously you you, ha- you you like it. I know people who are looking at Manu. I think Manu is a bit safer than Domyoung. He's just got better base stats and better tackle breaking ability. So he's more likely to get a higher floor. Um, so I think I like Manu this week. And again, wet weather, you think of someone like a Manu just slipping off tackles, just easy junk tackle busts. People who are trading in Manu, I think I like it. If I didn't have Dom Young already, I'd probably consider it. But I've already got Dom Young. I don't really want to double up with him and Joey Manu. I've got no, I've got no one from the Cowboys, so I think I just want Val Holmes this week. Any love for Jeremiah Nanai? I do like him as a bit of a pod. To be honest, I didn't actually really mention him at all um, on the stream on Tuesday. But he is very attacking, stat reliant. We know that, but we do know that the Titans can league points. Um, part of me is also like, am I completely just overplaying this whole Titans matchup? Am I just 
thinking it's going to be an absolute slam dunk and it turns out to not be the case but I think we just need to operate off the evidence that we've seen so far which is that the titans are very leaky and the cowboys are flat track bullies playing at home as well um on nanai so in terms of where the cowboys have scored most of their tries shout out to Supercoach guns for his try map so uh, north queensland cowboys have scored pretty even split pretty much the hooker is the only position that hasn't yet scored a try yet but they have scored two tries from their right second row forward in terms of the titans they have conceded so quick can i find it they actually have conceded only the one try to a, a right edge back rower. So it's not screaming a matchup that is targetable, but could be um, could be one there. Interestingly enough, the Titans also haven't conceded a try to a left center, but they have conceded five tries to a fullback, which is the most of any team. So drink water owners, you'd be happy, you'd be happy with that. But yeah, in that iron short, good pod, good upside this week. I would just probably be a little bit more concerned about the next few games. Play Liam Henry or Sam Hughes from Rods? Good question. Um, I'm playing Liam Henry. I know Hughes is starting, but I believe he started his very first week in the NRL too. Um, oh, no, he didn't. He ended up playing on the bench. But I just think even starting, we saw Poasa Farmasuli start and play like, what, 20 minutes? I just don't have as much confidence in uh, Hughes' minutes. He could maybe get 35 minutes where maybe he then gets like 40 points. At least with Liam Henry, we've seen evidence where in the two games he played with Fisher Harris, he's played 34 and 30 minutes. So I've got to get more. I've got a bit more certainty that he's going to play low 30 minutes, which at his PPM could be a high 30s, low 40 score. I just feel more confident that he's going to deliver me that compared to Sam Hughes. That's the only reason why I'm currently still playing Liam Henry um, over Hughes. Um, keep Strange or trade out for Blaze Talangi. Uh, Nick, I would ideally want to keep Ethan Strange. People who are in this position this week of say having no 5'8", Ethan Strange is perfectly fine, I think, to flip up to your 5 and play for the next two weeks because I think a home game against Parramatta is perfectly fine. Then he himself has the Titans at home. I think a lot of people are going to want to reserve him next week. So I personally actually don't want to sell Ethan Strange. His break even is not super low. It's 21, but the next two weeks are good. And at his price, he only needs one good kind of 80-plus score to just kickstart again the cash gen. So really, if he's really the only option you have to sell to Talangi, then fine, I get it but I think ideally I wouldn't want it to be trading him out. Care Money Munster or what? I'm doing it. Talk me out of it. Steve, I'm not a big fan of getting in Munster this week. Biggest reason is that he's coming off a groin injury, which seemed to be more serious than what the Storm were in thinking. Um, he kept him out for a little bit longer. He's a ball runner, tackle buster. That's where he gets most of his points, and that involves being explosive and running. Coming off this groin injury, I'm just not keen at all, I think. Um, he could play maybe a bit of a decoy role, maybe just ball playing I just don't see it as though he's I don't think you need to take that risk to jump on him uh this week uh can't hear you for some reason anyone else uh hopefully it's not hopefully it's just you and no one else but um haven't he- haven't heard anything just yet saying that I can't be heard any surprising odd captaincy this week um if you want to go a bit of a pod this week someone from the Warriors maybe SJ, DWZ would be a really um, punty option. Hammerso could be an option, but I'm a little bit always concerned just with the, the low base, but he hasn't really shown that so far yet. Um, what's my plan back to Cleary? Good question. Um, I think it may involve potentially selling. I'm really hoping that Bostock just killed it the next like two weeks and just fattens up to like 550k. And then if we get like a cheapie in the second or forward or maybe in the centers again, downgrade him maybe free up like 250k that could get me enough to maybe go brooks back to cleary um so i'm I'm banking on bostock i think making money as a downgrade and then sorry and then yeah so maybe that and then another option could be i don't know could even just nuff out joey lusick if dillbags continues to underperform he does have a buy in round nine if i'm thinking cleary maybe back round eight um because round seven i may want to keep brooks for titans if i'm thinking cleary back round eight I could also just flip Dillbags the week before he has a buy, potentially flip Dillbags via Luke Brooks to Cleary. That could also be a play. So I think I'm looking at it as I've got options. Things always change massively in Supercoach landscape. So I'm kind of thinking, just attack what I've got in front of me. And as long as I've got some idea of what I can do to get back to Cleary, then that might be enough. Blaze or Holmes in this week? Uh, it re- that's really dependent on, do you want points or do you want cash? Um, Val is for points. Talangi's for cash. I think you just need to prioritize which of the two for you is more important. 
Solange at least can still offer some points um, in that he's scored fairly re- good in terms of solid floor. So I think, yeah, it depends also. Like, I'm also looking at it as I didn't have a strong captaincy option and I wanted to captain Val. That's why I've made the moves I have, I've made to, to get Val into my team. And I'm spending big 829k. I'm not happy about it. Don't get me wrong. But we've got to do what we've got to do. Um, Grant or SJ this week? I'd have to say Grant. Just lock in the uh, the gun, and then uh, you can you can always. There are other good halfbacks like Cleary, Hines. Really, uh, I think I prefer just locking in Grant. Um, think of mine with sort of mid skin fade thoughts. Uh, no, nah, I'm not a I'm not a big fan of the fades. They're just too expensive to keep getting continual trips to the barber. Not about that life. Thank you to Jay for the five dollar donation. Very much appreciate it. Sorry if it's a repetitive question. Haven't had a chance to get to any content, but I bought Finu for Piakura. Is that okay for Cleary Fun? Um, no, that's perfectly fine. Some of the Finu has looked to be a good safe scorer around the fifties. Um, Piakura is like obviously still going to be out for the next. He's going to be out for two more games, I think, after this week. So I don't mind Piakura out. If you've got an ability to hold him, I also don't mind that either, just because you've got him back then. If, if Piakura is back in round seven, I believe that's when the Broncos are in the middle of a good run. And uh, yeah, in round seven, it's Raiders, West Tigers, Roosters, actually not fantastic. Um, if there's purely just a downgrade to make money, then look, I don't mind Finu. He's not going to make a massive amount of coin from this point, my guess, just because his break even is 11. But he seems like a very safe kind of 50 point player that you could plug into your team at any point. Uh, Grant or Dom Young VC? I actually would personally go Grant just because I think this game tomorrow in Sydney between the Bulldogs and the Roosters is going to be fairly wet. Uh, whereas Grant, as we saw Melbourne weather, it's a cool night, but it's sunny. There could be some dew, but yeah. I can't, I don't know. I kind of feel... I think I'd prefer just, again, take the weather off. We know we know Grant still can go 100+. plus. Um, him and Dom Young have the same floor. We know equally both can go 100+. plus. Just having a quick look. How do the Broncos fare against opposition dummy halves? They haven't actually conceded any tries... Sorry, they've actually conceded, interesting, they've actually conceded three tries through their middle um, so far this season. The only teams worse than that are the Cowboys. Yeah, only only the Cowboys are worse, and then they're on par with the Dragons. Could be a good game for Grant. I like VC on um, on Grant, if I'm being honest. Um, mate, you only need to go to the barber once a month or something to keep the fade on once you get it going. Trust me, I go to the um, barber, like... I think I get my hair cut six, every six to eight weeks. I don't go very often. Um, so, like, if I get a fade, I'll be doubling my trips. That's doubling the expenditure. That's a lot in my eyes. Um, yes, I know I'm cheap. But still, money's money. Times are tough. Costs are going up. Got a mortgage now, too. Uh, thoughts on straight captaincy, Pappy, if you don't have any other good options? I guess. If you don't have any other good options, then sure. Captain Pappy. Um Maybe a Tino hairstyle. Yeah, no, that won't be happening. Strange or Salmon to play? Uh, Ethan Strange, I'd be playing over Salmon. A bit more upside, I think, than him, and he's got a better matchup. Um, I'm going to say, <laughs> excuse me, Head, would you sell Brown to Holmes? Trusting Galvin to score similar to Brown this year. Dillbags to Val Holmes. Yeah, this has been a trade I've seen a few people make. Like, I mean, I had that option. Personally, wasn't too keen. Um, just because I was like, well, Dillbags has been close. Okay, I'll, I'll, it's a bit of a cop-out answer. It's not for me, but I would be okay with someone doing it. If, again, they're like me, really want to get Val this week and captain him, if that's really the only way you can do it, fine. And again, as I said, if that means flipping Ethan Strange up to your 5'8", for the next two weeks when Galvin's suspended, Ethan Strange is versing Parramatta at home and then the Titans at home, he's perfectly fine to play for the next two weeks. So... Yeah, if you're trying to, if you're looking at selling an underperforming gun, dual bags could be it. So I think, look, I don't hate it. I'll be honest. Like it's not for me, but I, I can't knock it if someone wants to do it. Um, what score do we want from VC Grant if playing with no halfback anyway? If you've got, if you've got a free loop this week, um, I'd be probably taking, especially with all the weather going around, I'd probably be taking like 110, 15. I think that's probably just lock in a safe kind of 200 plus point from your captain. I'd be pretty. Um, yeah, pretty handy. Stop giving out the hair so you should be charging for that. Yeah, guys, don't use shampoo, conditioner. You don't need to get your hair cut that often. Um, what's the rate you finance machine? Uh, I'm on a good rate, actually. Um, yeah, what is my rate? 
It's sub 6% actually, it's a good rate. Um, Moz says, I want a piece of this Melbourne attack, given I don't have Grant. I think Melbourne have a big season. Shades of 21-22 incoming. If Pappy scores like he did in 2022, I'll be happy. Oh my God, actually, I just had a random amazing thought. It's probably not going to happen, but please, Supercoach Gods, as one of your loyal disciples, can you please show us if Pappy walks up to the tee after the Storm have scored, hopefully Pappy scored, and if he walks up to take the goal-kicking tee, I will be... Oh, I'll never trade out Pappy if that happens, honestly. Did I have Foden this morning? Oh, God, Ian, don't remind me. I sold him for Salah. I had the option to sell Sun. Yeah, that was painful. Don't talk about FPL. I've repressed that memory already. Is A. Papali or Curran? I think now that Curran is named on the edge and maybe likely to get dual, I think I'd lean Curran. Someone else was also asking before Curran or Lane. Um, I kind of like Curran, to be honest. Just... If it looks like he's going to get the duel to plug into his second, row, uh, plug into front row forward, he's got automatically way more value than Sean Lane, and it's not that much more expensive. Probably doesn't have as much of a ceiling, but playing on the edge, you could get some attacking stats. So yeah, I think just leaning current. Uh, thank you, Steve Levers. Welcome to being a member. Very much appreciate it. Thank you very much. Am I wishing injury on Mini? No, no, no. I'm not wishing injury on Mini. Definitely, not. I don't want to be doing that. But I just want to see Pappy take. Just be like, you know what? We've had the buy. We've discussed in the in the. We've had the week off, boys. And you know what? I don't care what Belliac says. I know Meany's a good goal kicker, but the people want it. I'm going to goal kick again. I'm just hoping that happens. Please, please. Um, RTS to Holmes. No, I would not be doing RTS to Holmes. Um, RTS is coming into a good run himself. I think the matchup this week to the Rabbitohs is good. Then he's got Manly at home. I can see points there. Then it's the Dragons. Titans, Knights, it's a good run. I would be keeping RTS. I would not be selling for Val Holmes. I would sell Taylor May for Val Holmes if people are looking at that. Um, to me, that's a fair enough upgrade to be doing Taylor May. Um, do I like Fletcher Baker at all? Not really. Just feels a bit plottery. And just having a look at his price, what is he? He's 360k. He'll get you 49, 55. To be honest, it's not bad. He's got a break even of two. The only issue I see is that he's not going to be so much of a big cash generator in my opinion because he's going to be mainly around this 50 point mark and then um, Payne Haas will come back soon and then all of a sudden Fletcher Baker is probably going back to 30s. I just don't see a lot of inc- like a lot of cash gen out of him to worth trading him in and then probably eventually having to trade him out again. So um, he could be well, f- could be decent value for the next two weeks but I think when you take into account trading in and out, I think all that value gets um, eroded. Taylor Meta Holmes, yeah, Luca, as I said, I think that move, if you can do it, um, I, look, I, I think that it's a genuine upgrade. Uh, Ponga or Pappy? This week, Pappy. Next week, Pappy. From the week after, could be Ponga. Um, and I'm only saying this week, Pappy, again, just because of weather conditions. But long term, uh, Ponga, I think, is still number one. Um, I kind of spoke through my rationale for going Pappy a little bit early in the stream, but it's kind of, it just it let me keep Taylor May, who I just don't think I'm ready to sell yet. Would I sell Brooks slash Taylor May to Val slash Kai Pierce Paul? Um, May to Val Holmes, I'm I'm perfectly fine with doing that. And um, in terms of Brooks to Kai Pierce Paul, um, Pierce Paul, there was some news going around earlier from Barry Tui that he had a bit of a niggle, but he will still play. So I'm kind of just wondering, is he going to maybe not be as explosive um, against in, in this particular game? So... Anyone who was thinking of Pierce Paul, I still think if he's going to be named to play, you would think he's still going to be okay. Um, but I would probably um, just keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, in terms of selling Brooks to him, yeah, look, Brooks could go very low again this week. He's got a what? What's his break? 88 break even. God, that's annoying. Um, yeah, look, I don't mind it. You're kind of switching someone for a, who has got a lower break even. Liam Henry or Taylor May last reserve? Uh, for sure, Taylor May. I'd be taking the guy who's got the upside and plays um, 80 minutes. Olam Abai. I'm not too keen personally on Justin Olam. Just historically, you've, you would have heard this from every content creator that I've listened to this week. Historically, not been a great supercoach option. The next two weeks, matchups are decent, but straight away he then runs into Penrith. Um, like, I legitimately think he's a straight two week option. Dolphins and then Dragons, and then it's straight into Penrith and then the Broncos. Um, We've kind of seen it already once with Joey Lusick. Very low negative break even. He sucks us in. And then if he goes like kind of 35, 35, all of a sudden he's made sub 100K. And um, 
you've not really got the value out of him and then you've had to trade use two trades on him i i see that hap- i see that as a more likely scenario compared to maybe him where he makes like 150k plus um choke artist great comment what's my rank gronk <laughs> <clears throat> ponga in for turbo worth a boost in turbo for a boost it's a long term play I don't think the points may not be that different between the two of them this week but you would still think that Pong is going to outscore turbo and then you're going to want him probably over turbo anyway after that yeah I think it's just about worth a boost but it's definitely not a must trade but I can see the temptation uh, Brooks or Henry for last reserve oh. Henry's probably going to get you low 40s Brooks could very easily get the same yeah look I wouldn't mind sitting Brooks on the pine this week to be honest and just take the safe 40 um, Brooks could easily just get like in the 20s Tamalola to Flegler or wait till current duel and downgrade um, what is Tamalola's I mean Tamalola does need to go the issue with Tamalola this week is if we think that the Cowboys are going to smash the Titans the, uh, those are the type of games that Tamalola plays like bugger all minutes like 22 minutes round 1 21 minutes in round 3 could be the same again we could be looking at a teen score uh, I would personally be happy to just go to Flegler and just get rid of Tamalola if I'm being honest because I think it could be one of those games where he goes and plays like 20 minutes um, hey man, different kind of question. Brad Schneider, a good short-term trade-in to flip back to clear when he's back. The only option I see with Schneider is that yes, it's very short-term, but it's literally one week. You're getting it's only one more week you're getting out of him, and you know you're looking at this week, then a buy, and then clear he's back and he's out. You're like un- unless it was like against Titans this week or something. I just don't see it screaming a matchup where he's going to be um, going like huge. So if you're if you're asking from the view that you've um, You've got like no halfback playing at the moment. Honestly, I'd rather just take the AE than try to force a trade in of, of Brad Schneider. 298 watching. Unbelievable scenes. How good is this? Give the stream a like if you've enjoyed it. I don't know if Cho- I don't know if Choke Artist was enjoying it. Calling me names before. Unbelievable. Have I spoken about Munster? I did a bit already. Someone did ask about trading him in. I don't love it. Just coming off the groin injury. Just feel like a feel like an injury that's going to restrict him a little bit in terms. Oh, look, I'm not a physio, but. I feel like his super coach game is revolves around running tackle busts, and I don't know how good that's going to be. Favorite food on a night out? Kebabs. Mm, nah, pizza. I reckon I love pizza. Would I boost to go turbo to Paps? Already got KP. Boost turbo to Paps. I kind of actually see this a little bit better than the boost for turbo. Uh, boost for Ponga, because at least you're making some money out of that, and Paps will make more money with the negative break even. Um, and I think he's got a good matchup tonight, so. I think if I'm if I'm thinking Turbo to Ponga is worth a boost, I'd probably say for Paps is worth a boost. Um, if you had Holmes, who would I sell Mulatalo to? If I had Val Holmes already, I may not sell Mulatalo this week. Um, if I already had Val, but I was desperate to sell Mulatalo, I may have just gone. If I already had Val, I probably would have just gone gone Mulatalo to Talangi and just bank all of that cash, and then just use that as my way to upgrade Smithies, way to get back Cleary, whatnot. If it was for a actual, you know, playing option this week, um, I'd be tempted by like maybe a Manu, um, or I'd be very tempted to actually buy a DWZ. Is a bit of a pod. Thoughts on Ford and AFB? Want to get one worry for it in the squad? Out of the two, I prefer Jackson Ford. I think he's got pretty good base. AFB's base has sometimes been a little bit down. I think last week his base was on, on the lower side. Yeah, only base thirty five last. His highest base points this season have been forty eight. Compared to Jackson Ford, whose highest have been uh, 61. Um, even Ford's lowest at 39 is kind of Ford's lowest is higher than the base that Fenil Blake got last week. So, and I think Ford has shown some attacking upside, and I think he's cheaper. So I think I would take um, yeah, he's cheaper as well. Yeah, I'd be taking Jackson Ford over AFB. Salary sombrero. You must be a Roosters employee. Am I on Paps in for Mulatala via the boost? Already ditching Tino and Piakura for Flegler and Jackson Ford. Yeah, I like that. Mulatala to Pappenhausen. I think, as I said before, I think Mulatala has been a bit fortuitous in the last couple of weeks with his points towards, you know, he's got a lot of the points at the back end of each game. 
I just don't think he's... He's been good for the last couple of weeks. I'm happy with the points. But, yeah, I prefer Pappy. Um, would I play Hughes over Lolo this week? Yeah, <laughs> you know what? I probably would, just because I think Tom Lolo could be playing one of his 20-minute games this week. Would I sell Smithies or Burbo for Kai Pierce Paul? I'd be selling Smithies. So, Smithies is definitely a better play in your 17s this week. But, uh, I mentioned on the stream, you get still a bit more value with Burbo in that you sell Smithies, is a bit more expensive, so you get more money out of selling him. You don't Like, you don't have to spend as much to go to Kai Pierce Paul. And you keep Burbo in your team, who I think, you know, as we said before, after this Penrith Warriors match, I know his minutes haven't been great, but he does have some good matchups, which could mean maybe some one or two attacking stats. The cash gen could start kicking back in. And at the very least, he's dual. He's got a bit more utility in the team. Smithies just seems to be absolute plotter. Minutes just seem to be slowly deteriorating, maybe to like the 50s. And I just don't think he offers any attacking upside. Like Alex Palmer's asking Smithies to um, Kai Pierce for a good trade. Yep, I think so. Um, yeah, I've heard that Kai Pierce Paul is in doubt. Yep, so Barry Tui did say that he's had a niggle, but he's also said that after that that he will play. So I'm just working off the assumption that Pierce Paul is going to be playing this week. And maybe it's not 80 minutes, but maybe it's like 65, 70, but I still think that's good enough. Um, Rahul Dahal Travel, Dahal Travel or Kebab or One Night with Sean Johnny. Uh, I love Sean John. I love SJ, but um, food above all. Probably Dahal Travel. How can I knock that? The food of our people. Um, would I use a boost going Muller Tyler, Smithies, May, Alpha Val, Joy Manu, and then Talangi? I like that boost. Yeah, I like that boost, Tyler. Smithies can go Muller Tyler, I'm happy to get rid of, and you're getting two gun center wings and a great cash cow. Yeah, I like it. Um, I know Taylor May is not a Marcel, but in that particular instance, I like what it enables. Um, Baxter, have to get rid of one out of Savage, Telemay, or Labour. Who do you think? Um, <sighs> see, my head says Labour, but then also Labour has got Titans this week, and I just have to think you have to you have to run him out this week. Um, so it'd probably be limited to the other two, in which case probably the Savage has got the Titans next week. See, I prefer Telemay the most out of those three. I'm just going to say Savage. Uh, actually, you know what? My head says the one I'd want to get rid of first would be Laybot. Does have the Titans this week, though. So I think, do you have to get rid of one of them? If it's to, to Lungy, then I'd probably just sell Savage um, to him, I think. Kai Pierce Paul worth a boost, even with a niggle. Um, yeah, that can maybe give you enough doubt that he may not be so explosive that you don't have to use a boost on him. He does have a negative break even though. So even if he gets like 35, 40 points, it will mean that in the future weeks his price gen will cap. But at least you lock him into your team and you're getting him still with a negative break even. I still think he's fine to uh, to trade in. Trocard has been real quiet. Yeah, it's because I, uh, I humored his, um, his insult. Um, is Harry Grant a cheeky VC? Yes, he is. I mentioned the stat before. Um, the Broncos are equal with conceding tries through the middle with the Dragons, and only the Cowboys have conceded more. Isaiah Yo or Ola Kowatu, um, I Yo has been killing it, though. Like, I don't want to just dismiss him. He has been absolutely on fire. But he's 744k. Ola Kowatu is cheaper. This week doesn't feel like a great week to trade in Ola Kowatu, but at worst, he'll give you, what, 45 against Penrith? But then after that, you've got a pretty good run. Um, with good attacking stat potential, I'd probably still take Olaqua too, just for he's cheaper. And we know he's probably likely got a bigger ceiling. Although Isaiah Yo has already got a 90 plus game this week, uh, this season. Who's a bigger must trade in this week, Pappy or Val? I'd have to say Pappy. Uh, I'd have sorry. I'd have to say Val just because of the matchup. Yo, uh, what's up, Aman? Appreciate the grind and content. Thank you very much. Thoughts on going too picky and both firm or out for Kaipi, Spool, and Talangi, which leaves me with 430k. Thinking maybe to boost Lusik to Grant, boost or no? Um, Lusik to Grant, I think, is a perfectly fine boost, to be honest. Um, Lusik's break-even isn't super high, so he's got a break-even of 58, so he could ride it out this week. Um, what is Harry Grant's, actually? Grant's got an 87 BE. He could meet that. Um, but I think I think that's a pretty good move, to be honest, to go Lusik to Grant. You just lock him in um, as your set-and-forget hooker. Um, Aman running off the fence is that show card. <laughs> There you go. I thought I wasn't too I, I wasn't too mean back to him. 
Uh, Val Holmes on Drinkwater Captain. This is a great question. People are asking it on Twitter. Originally, my answer was Val, just because he's the goal kicker. Um, but thinking about it a bit more, you'd think that if the Titans are to concede points, it's, just, it's generally just going to be because the fullback has done something in terms of um, drink water. And looking at the stats as well, um, so the Titans have conceded five tries to opposition fullbacks, which is the most out of any team so far this comp. They've conceded no tries to opposition left centers, though. So based on what's happened so far, fullbacks have definitely been the one that's profited versus the Titans, not the left center, which would be Val. Um, we've seen Drinkwater go like 150 plus, even without um, goal kicking. Even last week, he had a pretty bad game, um, but he still based 34 points and still ended up on 77. Val got 59 with a try. Thinking about it a little bit more, looking at that, those stats a little bit in more detail, I think I'd actually lean captaining Drinky over Val now this week. Um, are you worried not having Ponga? Yes, I am, Toby, but I'm just praying the next two weeks, the wet weather this week, and then um, Roosters next week can just kind of limit him. Although I said that when I sold him originally, and that didn't work out, so I could just be playing with fire. Straight C, Pappy, only other options are RTS, Young, or Turbo. Yeah, I mean, I definitely wouldn't want to be captaining Turbo this week, nor would I want to captain Young. Yeah, out of the four, Pappy would be the best option, so I probably would straight captain. Um, Jackson Ford or Ellie Katoa from Kahu CJ. That's a very good question as well. Uh, early in the week, I was a bit more high on Jackson Ford, but I think, because I think his run is a little bit better over the next few weeks compared to Katoa. Um... He's still also a little bit cheaper. He's got better base stats as well than Katoa. I'd actually, th- I think I'd actually still go Jackson Ford at the moment. Uh, yeah, he's cheaper, better base. I think his next few matchups are a bit better as well. Am I watching WrestleMania? Um, I don't watch wrestling. Sorry. <laughs> um, Captain Ponga, SJ, or the Hammer. So the Saturday weather is not supposed to be too bad in the afternoon in Sydney, so SJ might be the play there, but Hammer at home versus the Titans. In your situation, I think I'd VC Ponga, and I think I would captain... uh, I think I would captain... Hammer. Just because I know Souths have been bad, but still... That game could be like a low-scoring game. Maybe it's like a 12-16 type game. So maybe it's not a huge points game. Warriors still may win. Uh, but yeah. Thoughts on CNK as a pod? I would love CNK. The only issue is that he's only listed at fullback. I just think there are so many better options than him. Last year, the reason we all had him was because he was available in the centers. That's not the case this year. Uh, we've got 10 minutes to go. So we'll probably do another 5 to 7-ish minutes um, on the stream. And then we'll wrap it up there. Uh, sorry, just, I'm just checking some notifications on X. Also, apologies to anyone else who's trading in Pappy. The way that my picks have been going recently, I'm cursing everyone who I trade in. So please, please let this not be one of those times. I'm applauding to the, I'm pleading to the Supercoach gods because I put up a tweet. I last owned Ryan Pappenhausen in Supercoach round 9, 2022. It has been a long time since I've owned this beautiful man. Pappy, actually, you know what? I've, I hope I don't jinx it, but I've only had good times with Pappy. Um, I did. I think I I owned him when he got that game where he got injured early, but I didn't captain him that week. But he's playing the Broncos. I very distinctly remember um, captaining him against the Bulldog uh, against the Broncos when he scored four tries. Probably one of the best memories I've got in uh, in all of Super Coaching. Yeah, that was fantastic. Was that and was that in twenty twenty one? I think it was in twenty twenty one. I can't even remember. It was twenty twenty one. Round four, twenty twenty one. Hundred ninety seven points. God, it was. God, that felt good. Captaincy deal bags. Yeah, deal bags is safe, but I don't think I'd feel that confident with deal bags captain. Just with his 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 base doesn't seem to be still as yet high as last year or last few seasons. And uh, I think Raiders away is not easy. I think Eels, again, shout out to Random Stats guy. I think he posted that the Eels have only won three of their last 17 games against the Raiders at GIO. I, I would tip Raiders in that game, so 
I don't really feel like it's um, a great week to captain dual bags. What do I think about Mitchell Tuponga, Sam to Kaipis Paul, and Jacob Gagai to Talangi? I think those are really good moves, Bob. Um, I think you're getting upgrades in every one of those trades, so I think good boost. Um, VC Grant, Toby, yes, I like VC Grant. Uh, I'll mention this out one more time. Um, apart from the Cowboys, no other team has considered more tries to opposition dummy halves. Uh, that's the Broncos, equal with the Dragons. Cowboys are one ahead on four tries. Captain Holmes or Drinkwater, I've just mentioned it before. I think I'd actually probably now lean Drinkwater. Um, what are you taking from your VC, thinking 80+. plus? In terms of my AEs this week, it's going to be Sam Hughes, Burbo, or Smithies. So I luckily have Heinz as an option to loop. So I'll see what Sam Hughes gets tomorrow. And then I might make a call on the loop. But I think if I get 110 plus, as I mentioned, I think I'll be pretty happy to just lock those points in. Actually, you know what? If I'm bringing in Val's captain, I don't even I don't even know what I'd want from Pappy to lock it in. Sam Hughes starting or Lussick? I think I, I think I still take Lussick. Um, Firmor to Kaipis Paul or Lolo to Flegler? Uh, Lolo to Flegler. I th- well, you know what? I, see, I prefer Kaipis Paul, but I prefer selling Lolo. Uh, Kaipis Paul, I still think. He's cheaper than Flegler. I th- I'd prefer him. Um, Pappy or Adams here? Who's Adams? Sorry, apologies. We're we talking about Adam Reynolds? I don't even know. Apologies. Uh, would I do RTS to Holmes? Nah. Sorry. I'm, I'm, no, I wouldn't be doing RTS to Holmes just because of the, the next few games for the Knights, uh, for the for the Warriors, I should say. You're doing Mulatala to Ponga and Tuapi to Talangi. Is it worth a third boost? Palisir to Kaipis Paul is definitely worth the boost. Artist to Holmes is not, in my opinion. Um, I have the same center wing as you, except for May. You've got Tungo. Would I trade Tungo for Garrick? Nah. If you've got Tungo, you, you keep him, I think, for sure. Garrick's got Penrith. You don't want it. You don't really want Garrick this week versus Penrith. How much time we got? We've got six minutes to go. I think we'll do a couple more minutes, and then I'll um I'll leave you all to get nicely positioned in front of the couch, or I don't know if you're listening at listening to this at the pub, get in front of a TV at the pub or whatever. <laughs> but before you leave, do give the stream a like. VC Pap and Captain Holmes or VC SJ and Captain Drinky? Oh, that's tough. As, as a combo, I prefer the VC Pap Captain Holmes, but I think Drinky could now actually be a better captaincy than Val Holmes. So I'd probably still just lean the first one because I think you're getting a better VC, but yeah, that's a very tough one. Um, do I think points allowed to certain positions as a real or bait stat? I think it's a real stat. The only issue with using it too much this season or is that we've only got four games of data. But I remember for a long time, Parramatta just had this thing where they always consider points to opposition fullbacks. So that's always stuck with me, is that if you've got a fullback versus Parramatta, you can expect points. Um, I think it's a very real stat because it, you know there are teams who do have weaknesses uh, in, their, in their team um, in terms of various positions. So yeah, I think it's definitely a real stat. Uh, Smithies to Crichton. I don't love trading in Angus this week just because he's got a break in of like 70. There still is Satili on the bench, so we don't even know if Crichton's going to play big minutes yet. So I think I'd, I'd, I'd definitely want to wait and see what happens with Crichton's minutes before I go trading him in. And Smithies has got like a 37 break even. Like he probably is not going to lose money this week, fingers crossed anyway. So no, I wouldn't be doing that particular move. Is made to Val worth a boost? Uh, Jason, yes, I think it is. Um, I was very keen. I was very close to doing made to Val as my boost. Can we please have an Aman hair captain option? What does that even mean? I don't even know what that means. Um, Ponga, Lomax, Paps, or Grant captain? Uh, I wouldn't do Lomax, nor would I do Grant. It's either Ponga or Paps, Nick. If you're looking to straight captain, I would still have to think it's Pappy. Just better weather conditions. Um, that's all I'd be basing it on. I know he's not goal kicking, but like this game against... The Dragons at Newcastle in the wet. It just doesn't... I don't know. I don't have a good vibe about it. Thanks, Martin. You're the man. Cheers. Love the lime sheet. Thank you so much. Anyone exiting, please give the stream a like on the way out. Lussick or Henry last reserve. I would probably take Lussick over Henry. He's going to play more minutes than him, surely. Um, all right. Let's see if there's any other questions we haven't yet really tackled. Otherwise, we've got three minutes left. So let's see. I think people are starting to drop out, which is fair enough. Chad Townsend, Captain, definitely not. 
It would be my last reserve out of Lusik, Burbo, and Strange. Not Burbo, definitely not. Um, well, I'm at the moment thinking Lusik over Strange, so I think I'd take... Actually, you know what? Could change my mind on that one. Uh, TBD, but considering how Ethan Strange has been scoring recently, could be him actually over over Lusik. And I'm actually now leaning towards playing Talangi over Lusik. Aman, drink your ki- uh, KP for the captaincy. Uh, definitely drinky, I think, Kahu. Um, all right, let's do one more question, and I think we will wrap it up there. Just because we have about three minutes to go. Uh, boost for Brooks to Caesar, if it allows you to bring in Val and Talangi. I mean, the Brooks to Caesar move I get is your downgrade. You are bringing in Val and Talangi, which I do like. Yeah, why not? That's how I'm thinking about it. YOLO, have some fun this week. Captain Val, get get the matchup against the Titans. Bring in Pappy, just because I love watching the man. Um, all right, I think we're going to end the stream there, guys. Uh, hopefully, you all enjoyed it. Quick fire. Hopefully, I got to all of your questions um, as much as possible. Give the stream a like on the way out if you did enjoy it. Um, no promises if we can do a stream on Sunday this week to wrap up, but we should hopefully do some kind of wrap up video. Um, but yes, it's been a busy week for streams. We did a Monday, we did a Tuesday, we did a Thursday. So I may give myself Sunday off, and I also think I've got something else on anyway. So maybe see you Sunday night. Otherwise, it will just be a video. Thanks everyone for tuning in, and uh, good luck this week. And uh, see you all in the next one. Cheers.